I look forward to learning more about The Big Picture, Rethinking Dyslexia, which is a HBO special and also going to be out in DVD form also. And um, I want to know more about how you came about to produce this film. Well, it's a personal project, first and foremost. My wife and I, uh, you know, realized um, when my son was in about first and second grade that something wasn't quite right in the way he was reading and writing. Um, at the time, this is sort of the late 90s, there weren't some of the online resources, and also there wasn't the sort of cultural shift that's taken place, we feel, in the last 13, 15 years that makes dyslexia a little easier to identify than it was in the late 90s. So it was a bit of a journey to figure out what was going on. Is and your wife a teacher? She is. My wife uh, has been teaching for 26 years. And as she says in the movie, because she's in the movie with my son, um, she couldn't wait to, you know, be this amazing mother teacher and to use all her best tools to help him become a great student and develop a love for reading and writing and everything else. And she hit a wall, you know, and it was mystifying. Um, but she's tenacious and we were both very concerned. Um, and it took us a while to figure it out. First it was a you know, processing issue or a maturity issue, he's a boy, all these sort of grumblings. But ultimately by fourth grade um, it was clear that it was dyslexia and um, we put him in a remedial program and, and he began to work his way back towards more reading competency and ultimately um, writing skills as well. But it is hard work and it's very difficult on young children and it left us feeling like, boy, where was, where's the movie that, that explains this to parents and families? Where's that content that can enable you, once you have a diagnosis, to understand at least there's hope involved and there's light at the end of the tunnel and that it's a journey and that very much so dyslexics who seem like they're really struggling as children very often end up excelling in life as adults and you just have to be patient and understand that it's not an academic death sentence. So having that in us, uh, when I was presented the opportunity to make the film by Karen Pritzker, who's the producer and a supporter of the Yale Center for Dyslexia and Creativity, which is, by the way, one of the pre preeminent research centers for dyslexia with Dr. Sally Shaywitz, and they do an amazing job with um, you know, uh, diagnosis and um, remediation as well. And in doing so, Karen became familiar with my work and understood that I had been doing documentaries and wondered if I could do a, um, a project with her. So mm -hmm. uh, I jumped at it. It was, you know, it's not often as a parent you're given a platform to express your feelings about something you really care about. And this was that chance. So I think a lot of times um, parents don't even know to give the child the testing to right. find out what's going on. And I think testing is like a roadmap to understand the way a child's brain is working or where the difficulty or the differences are. And right. I think as a parent and as a child, if you know what's going on, you can then sort of, you know, guide it a little bit this way or guide it and you can ask for help in different areas like you did with Linda Mood Bell. And yeah. So yeah. I think that's an important awareness yeah, for parents. It is. it is. I mean, I think the my sense is that in the long run, I think there's going to be a day in the future when we come to really understand that everybody has their own unique learning profile. I, you know, in the interest... We, we've got our maps. Yeah. Everybody has their own unique maps. And because the education system has to take care of so many, we educate to the middle and we educate to the norm in terms of the average. But if you really look at it, there really is no average person. That's a, that's a number. Right? So what are we doing educating to the average? It's really about the economics and the unfortunate economics of how little resources we put towards educating our children. But I think this is, this is the problem we're in right now. I think eventually these labels around, you know, what you, how you learn, what, what are your strengths and your perceived weaknesses are going to recede. And we're just going to come to understand that learning is as specific as our fingerprints and we're going to be able to cater to our unique way of learning and hopefully with that some of these stigmas around not being able to read quickly or write quickly are going to go away because right now 
a lot of kids are burdened with feeling sh ashamed of their learning profile and feel like they're stupid or... And that stays with you for a does. long time. It does, and it continues um, on into adult life. I mean, here's my son at a top-notch college doing very well. What school is he going to now? He goes to Middlebury College. Okay. And, but he will talk very eloquently about, you know, um, even, even in college, uh, managing the way I need to study and learn versus the college environment it's just always going to be there, you know. I think you just get good at managing it. Um, it never goes away, and I think there's, there's not necessarily entirely bad news with that because what also doesn't go away is how you think out of the box, your ability to think um, creatively. Uh, most dyslexics are very bright, and once they figure out where that manifests, um, they show extraordinary capacities um, around original thinking, whether it's in medicine or literature or art or business, um, you know, the Fortune 500 companies in this country have a large amount of dyslexics running them. And there's a reason for that because of the way they see the big picture. And it's really great if you learn early on how your child is thinking so you can guide them in that direction if that's the direction they're going to go into instead of fighting. Yes. And you know, we live in a comparative society uh, that's such a strong thing that presses down on most parents. And you're trying to figure out, am I doing a good job? Or how is this going? Am I, am I touching all the bases? Is, am I forgetting anything? How is... And you look around at your community and the tendency is to sort of try to figure out where you fit in and all that. So there's pressure to want to at least be like everybody else, which is, in the end, sort of a hopeless quest anyway, because nobody's really like anyone else. So, um, you know, I think with dyslexia, if you can just uh, take it as actually a gift, to real, to an, early, an early awareness that we're all unique, and how you deal with your kid and how you guide them towards their best selves is unique. You know, embrace that. Get through it. I think it. I'm dyslexic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do be because when I read, I, I look at every word and, and it like I, every single word I have to be in love with till I get to the next word. And it takes a long time to read. And I think having a daughter that has dyslexia, I started thinking, maybe I have it too. And I just wasn't diagnosed in those days. Oh, yeah. I think in the arts, is, you know, probably half the people in, that are in the arts, as you are, are um, dyslexic. And, you know, it's one in five worldwide. Every, one in five people walking on this planet right now. Think about how many humans that are. That's and there's a spectrum. Some have it mildly, some have it profoundly. But still, it's. If you, can you think of something that affects one in five people that has gone so under the radar? It's, it's, it's and weird. And that the education system should be a little bit more helpful in that area. Yeah.